the ultimate genetic limiting factor to how much muscle you can gain is myostan. Myostan creeps up, stops the gains of the steroid cycle, right? What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I'm going to be doing an introductory video on folistatin gene therapy. And when I say introductory, I'm saying this is going to be a series and this is base level knowledge. So if you already have that, please click off. I'm currently reading into it heavily and would like to get Alec in the mix as far as the, you know, the bigger biohacking brain. I want to really break it down and I've talked to him about Folistan behind the scenes and he's also not very well read. And if you know anything about Alec, he needs to have it fully read into before he draws a conclusion. But I did want to bring it on the channel it's heavily requested i did a community guidelines post and by all means hit the subscribe button click all like the video boost me to 50k people are getting unsubscribed every day but you guys are overcoming that by subscribing faster than they can unsubscribe people from this channel so i'm fighting that battle anyways fullistan is the dark horse right if you guys have followed the channel for a while of andrew threw up one of the most popular injectable YK11 vlogs. I've been one of the first people to really document, you know, injectable YK11, whether it blocks myostan or not. That's up for debate, and that's another, you know, podcast topic that we'll do on Blunt Biohacking, so please subscribe to Blunt Biohacking. I'll have Andrew throw up the card to subscribe to Blunt Biohacking. That's gonna be the podcast channel with me and Alec once we hit a thousand subs. I'm bringing celebrity guests. You guys gotta get me like 250 more subs. Come on, guys. Anyways, full of Sten. So there's a lot of muscle building pathways you got the androgen pathway you got the local growth factor pathway aka inflammation you got the gh pathway any gh facilitating peptide that fucks around with igf1 would be in that category to cause hyperplasia aka the splitting and building of new muscle cells new permanent muscle cells so you got androgen local growth factor and you got growth hormone as well as the dark horse in the room so again androgen steroid swarms local growth factors you could do an omega-6 or anything that causes inflammation for that matter to cause like local stimulated growth training is a local growth factor obviously you got the gh to repair and create new cells cause hyperplasia and then you have the dark horse in the room that everyone has their eyes on because this is going to be the next big thing and russo is always on the cutting edge and it, with this it's like hard because there's not really much data and not too many people have dipped their feet in as far as playing around with the compounds i'm on the fence of playing around with them to be honest and i'll go into my inclinations why as well as what i found on the internet about it is the myostan pathway so i'll bring up and have andrew throw up a picture i've done this before on the channel of the belgian blue cow right search belgian blue cow this cow pops up super muscular jacked out of its mind it does nothing but walk around and eat grass all day i'll andrew throw up a picture of my dog ghost ghost is a selective bred american bully blue nose pit like i said what do these two share in common ghost you know i take him on one walk a day he's not fucking pulling like stones and shit in the backyard or like doing push-ups but he's muscular all the time the belgian blue is eating grass all day walking around muscular all the time the ultimate genetic limiting factor to how much muscle you can gain is myostan myostan creeps up stops the gains of the steroid cycle right and we've touched on this on blunt biohacking right in the podcast alec explains why you should use an anabolic compound such as mpp in the off season to gain mass because it's not creeping up myostan as fast as blasting a super androgenic compound like trend in the off season which would creep up myostan faster which would halt your progress that's why you can't just you know go on a blast 
and blast forever and just continue linearly gaining progress. Eventually, Myostan is going to step in, your body is going to freak out and use the only fail safe that it knows to stop from gaining too much muscle. Because remember, bodybuilding ain't natural. Natural bodybuilding ain't natural. Obviously, enhanced bodybuilding is fucking off the chain, not natural. But like, to a sense of your body doesn't want to carry a bunch of lean tissue. Think of the amount of blood volume the lean tissue needs. Think about the nutrients the lean tissue needs. Think about all the other implements of how that impacts you know movement you know the body is really not looking to hold more lean tissue than it needs and unless you're in an environment where you're constantly causing the environment to build tissue aka training or aka in the wild like i'll use primates for example that like how they climb trees right their myostan genetically drops over time as they're selectively bred or with the belgian blue genetically modified this is what's happening to us, right? Falastan gene therapy is now hitting the scene. Everyone wants Russo to make a statement on Falastan gene therapy when I'm over here being honest and upfront that I am not as well read as I want to be on this pathway. I am doing this as an introductory video to collect information in the comments below. So please weigh in your personal opinion on Falastan gene therapy. But essentially it would be like modifying your myostan levels, which I've done in the past, supposedly with YK11. YK11 being a steroidal structured SARM, but everyone in the comments are gonna be like, yo, it's a DHT based roid, so we're gonna call it a DHT based roid. And I'll have Andrew throw up the study of test tube study to show that in cells, it apparently is lowering myostan, right? Increase fullostan, right? Fullostan, myostan. These are the two deciding factors, right? So you increase fullestan, that lowers myostan. The lower your myostan, the more lean tissue you easily hold. A lot of the genetic phenom bodybuilders have been selectively bred for low myostan, and it is what it is, right? I think the best example is Ronnie Coleman. So I'll have Andrew bring up a picture of Ronnie Coleman completely natural training in powerlifting. So he's doing powerlifting type training, holding all that tissue. Now he's been diagnosed with low myostan, right? Yeah, they did a gene test on him. He's a specimen, right? He's a specimen to study. How's this guy get so big, right? He's Mr. Olympia. Anyone can juice themselves to the gills, but not everyone turns out to Ronnie and there's only really one Ronnie, right? There's only really one big Rammy, right? What's the, what's the deal with this? They don't have high myostan and Ronnie Coleman was genetically blessed or cursed with low myostan. Now there's trade-offs, right? There's trade-offs to having low myostan, but we can see when Ronnie Coleman was natural and Ronnie Coleman was powerlifting, right? He had a shit ton of lean tissue to where someone like me would powerlift. I would get stupid strong and could get, you know, close to the same strength as Ronnie if I trained my entire life. With him doing the same training, he would build all this muscle mass where I would have to do more hypertrophy-based training and train against my myostan genetics to try and hold tissue where he easily holds tissue he naturally easily holds tissue and that's because he had low myostan you add steroids into the mix that's lighting gasoline on the fire and that's why he created one of the craziest mass monster physiques of all time i'll have a little I have a little Ronnie Coleman stage footage. You know, that's a great example. And I give the example of my dog. He was selectively bred over time for the low myostan gene. And then the Belgian blue was a genetically modified cow where they directly fucking took out the myostan to zero to see what happened. And it's the most muscular cow ever. Full of stan gene therapy is hitting the biohacking scene, but everyone's kind of like, you know, a little bit terrified because obviously, you know, everyone bitches about SARMs. Oh, there's no long-term data of SARMs. Well, SARMs still operate in the androgen pathway. We have a lot of literature on synthetic androgens operating in the androgen pathway, what that elicits as far as side effects, obviously with the ligands, it's kind of unknown, but at the end of the day, we have some sort of inclination of the long-term damage that synthetic androgens do. SARMs, you know, you can kind of lump that in a synthetic androgen. With this myostan altering, this is the wild, wild west, right? We have no idea what modifying myostan will do long-term. And in my opinion, we have no idea what modifying myostan will do to the heart will it grow the heart it's not selective everything grows all muscles grow your heart's a muscle as cardiac muscle but it's still a muscle and that's the big drawback is the mortality drop possibly with 
doing Folistan gene therapy. So, so I've talked about YK11 because this is what I personally have experience with. And to my, you know, defense, I don't know if YK11 in actual reality is impacting my myostan or not personally. All the side effects of low myostan, meaning my tendons and joints kind of feel like kind of creaky, which people point the finger, well, you, you would feel like that on Winstrol, you would feel like that on other DHT-based derivatives. Having done other DHT-based derivatives and high dosages, I do feel exceptionally brittle on YK11 more than anything else. Is that placebo? Because I think it's impacting myostan, that's up for you to decide. There is test tube proof that YK11 does fuck with myostan. So so that's my, you know, takeaway and experiences when I did injectable YK11. I got so big so rapidly. I mean, go watch the injectable YK11. Just search injectable YK11 Ryan Russo and all those vlogs will pop up. You can see the insanely fast progress and I was only doing around 350 sustain on a week and just ramping the injectable YK11 and then adding an injectable LGD and I exploded, right? I have that posing footage I always show. That was my most craziest cycle to date the craziest look I've ever achieved and YK11 played a role in that. And the other thing with YK11 is that a lot of the bro science is the inclination of like, oh, as the steroid cycle continues, myostatin is rising up to stop the gains. Well, let's add in YK11. If it does work and inhibit myostatin and add it in towards the tail end of the cycle to lower the myostatin to keep the gains coming for a little bit longer or to prolong the actual results of the cycle so you're not just redlining the cycle, just maintain the look but not actually building tissue because we're all about taking the steps forward to build the tissue, you know, supplementing our bodies to this extreme amount of damage from the androgen abuse for the tissue gain. If the myostan is gonna creep up and nuke that YK11 or another myostan inhibitor has a lot of ploy to continue the gains, has a lot of ploy to make the cycle worthwhile and that is the theory. The other theory Coach Trevor recommends to me a couple times as to do YK11 at night and creep your your myostan down if it works at night which would help you build tissue because you're building tissue when you sleep so if you're on GH with the GH pathway anything that facilitates GH you're causing hyperplasia the splitting of new cells if you cause local inflammation by obviously training and damaging the muscle you have high IGF which is going to be repairing the muscle rapidly and then you would add in the myostatin inhibitor for example I'm using YK11 because it's the only one I've experienced with you would be lowering the myostatin which again is removing the genetic limiting factor of the tissue being built to the most extreme degree so there's that other things is right we have turkosterone we have ectosterone we have the natty fucking steroids where you still keep your natty card it's been hyped to the moon the one that is not talked about that much but is there is epicatechin epicatechin is a natural myostatin inhibitor now i made a video on this i'll have andrew throw it up i think i made a video on it anyways epicatechin was the natural myostatin inhibitor that everyone was raving about and it lumps into like how Turkosterone like kind of works. I took a ton of epicatechin. It was super expensive. I didn't notice anything, but that's like the natural myostatin inhibitor that everyone was talking about for a while. But what everyone wants me to talk about is what's coming to the forefront in the alternative medicine scene, and that's folistatin gene therapy. Directly injecting folistatin into the body, creating an influx in a higher folistatin level, thus will result in a drop in myostatin, no question. Everyone's wondering that because this would mean if this works, this completely changes the game of bodybuilding forever. And you could argue that the people in the Middle East, the camel crew, if you guys are hardcore into following bodybuilding, guruing, what people are doing to abuse drugs to create super pro level physiques, you can kind of inclinate that what's going on in the Middle East and the camel crew, Kuwait, where all the mass monsters are sitting is they're impacting, they're juicing themselves to the gills, juicing themselves to the gills, they're doing the best pharma grade GH, and they're obviously doing insulin with the GH. But the wild card is, are they messing with their folistatin? Are they injecting folistatin and lowering their myostatin, which is why they're creating the freakiest of all freaks? Is it because, you know, they're training like the military in Kuwait and that's why? I don't know. My inclination would be that 
they could be injecting folistan and when you inject folistan it's in a direct inhibition of myostan which would result in just more lean tissue doing nothing right the way this changes the bodybuilding game is that you don't have to go to the gym as much in fact if they had a selective myostan inhibitor which i don't even know if it's possible i don't think it is but if they had a safe ish which none of fucking with myostan is really safe myostan inhibitor you basically wouldn't have to go to the gym to be muscular you basically could just take it sit on the couch and because your myostan level is crashed your body's going to start accumulating tissue because like i said that's the ultimate genetic limiting factor that stops you from gaining too much muscle that you die the body if you're in the wild if you were hunting and gathering right you would not want a lot of lean tissue unless you were like climbing trees unless you were constantly climbing rocks and shit exposing your body to an environment that it needs to drop the myostan level to create the tissue to survive otherwise it doesn't want to hold the tissue from the metabolic demand the demand of the blood flow etc etc it takes a lot to maintain tissue that's why you see like the bigger bodybuilders they got to carry the gallon jug to hydrate the muscle they got to do this certain amount of food to feed the muscle right it becomes tedious and that's why bodybuilding is a professional thing because it's so difficult to maintain a shit ton of tissue Issue. it's a full-time job with myostan inhibition we are now crossing the corner of a new era of bodybuilding and this is the very tip of the iceberg in my opinion so what is your experience with injectable folistan i will say that a certain pro who's classic physique local in pittsburgh now I'm, I'm gonna throw a bit of shade i don't know if he watches the channel or not if he does i am a fan of you but i remember i asked him about his cycle and he didn't tell me exactly what his cycle is because I know the person who gave him a lot of his gear. And the guy who was giving him his gear told me what he was taking. And he said the wild card to his physique was he was doing, I believe, don't quote me, I'll have to search and I'll have Andrew put the actual drug name in. But he was doing the one peptide Folistan 444 and he was doing tons of it. So he was injecting Folistan, taking advantage of this pathway that is so cutting edge, so new, so unknown and so dangerous. And his physique was bonkers he was extremely fucking lean all tissue at 230 and when he did his prep for the pro show here in pittsburgh he didn't lose that much stage weight he was already in shape and he could gain tissue extremely easily it's already being fucked around with it's not being talked about it's being kept as that like wild card that oh you don't know about and for me to bring it to light i still don't know enough science about it right i still don't know all the receptors it plays on the downstream effects the cascading effects and i'm gonna you know talk to alec that he needs to study into this and that this could be cutting edge shit overall that's just kind of an introduction on folistan i'll say that um tony played around with ace ace is a myostan inhibitor and when he injected ace he had a burning sensation he put it in his delt and had a burning sensation in his delt for three days so don't know what's going on with that. If you guys have experience with folistan, messing with folistan levels to lower myostan, which is the last failsafe for your body to stop it from gaining too much tissue. The last failsafe to stop your body from growing the heart too big. There's a lot of I don't knows. There's nothing to look at. There's nothing to draw conclusions from, from previous medical data, like how I related. Oh, you know, with SARMs, you can still draw previous conclusions from all the steroid research because still in the androgen pathway this myostan pathway is cutting edge and brand new and this is the introduction and who knows you might see russo document a folistan cycle so give a thumbs up if you want to see that i'll see you in my next video